So on this very first one, this is a nice, this is R, this is theta, so it's really just a plug and shut. I start as a point, so I want to end up as a point. If I start as an equation, I want to end up as an equation. So if I want to know what x is, that's R cosine theta, so that's 2 cosine 4 pi over 3. And what's cosine of 4 pi over 3? Minus 1 over 2. Because what angle we're really dealing with there is, what quadrant are we in? Three. Yeah, we're in three. We're a little bit past pi, and we're dealing with like a 60 degree angle. Cool. So this will be negative one half. So x will be negative one. And y will be twice sine four pi over three. And since we're in the third quadrant, it's negative again. So it'll be twice yeah, it must be the other one, negative root 3 over 2, so y equals negative root 3. Cool, so the point you get is negative 1, negative root 3. Cool. Okay, and now, now when you hit these, and you know, admittedly, I threw this at you before I really talked about this, but I cosine theta by itself, I don't know, but what, what would, what's r cosine theta? What's r cosine theta equal to? X. X, beautiful. So what's missing in front of the cosine theta? R. R. So how do I put it there? I don't just put it there because, well, Jeff obviously forgot to put it there. I just multiply both sides by r. r. Multiply by r, multiply by r. I get r squared equals 5r cosine theta. Well, what's r squared? Uh, x, squared x, squared plus plus y squared. Squared. x squared plus y squared. Because remember, we're trying to convert. I want to get all my r's and thetas gone, and I want only x's and y's left. Equals 5 r cos and theta, like you told me, is? Um, x. X. Cool. And what is this the equation of? Uh, what shape? R. R. Um, r squared. Circle. What shape? A circle. Thank you. It won't trace out an r. So x squared plus y squared equal, you know, as long as you have x squared and y squared and maybe some other x's and y's and numbers, that's a circle. I just haven't completed the square for 5x. I haven't pulled that over. But see how nice, obviously circular equations should be really nice in polar coordinates. And I get r equal 5 cosine theta. Can somebody tell me, I mean, you would have to suck this over and so forth, but <laughs> origin's normally here. The origin is going to move. Can anybody tell me which way the origin is going to move now? If I pull this over, it's x squared minus 5x. I'll end up with x minus something squared. So it's going to move over this way a little bit. Yeah. Do you notice how it's got a cosine in the equation? So it's sitting on the x-axis. So if I had r equal 5 sine theta, it'd be a circle sitting on the y-axis. If I had r equal cosine theta plus sine theta, that's a circle sitting basically up and over. So it's going to be off at a diagonal. So circles are very simple and polar. Thank God, they should be, because polar is freaking circular. You guys get the idea there. So if you see a sine theta sitting somewhere, you're trying to work with an equation. Let's say an equation, yeah. If, if I have an equation like um, two sine theta plus r equals you know, tangent theta over r. Let's screw some. But I kind of start here and I say, if only there was an r here, then r sine theta is uh, y. r cosine theta is x, r sine theta is y. So I just multiply both sides, everything by r. So here's the cool thing. This will be twice y, y plus, plus X squared, X squared plus Y squared, y squared mm -hmm. equals oh, Y over X. Y over X. Oh. And then you can, you, know, you can simplify that, whatever you want to. Multiply by X at least or whatever, and that's fine. <laughs> that's different. All right. So when you're going from 4 to rectangular, you're just... Oh, wait, never mind, never mind. Yeah, so when you're going from polar to rectangular, you're trying to find either x squared plus y squared or tangent theta, 
or r cosine theta, r sine theta, something that's going to take me back to x's and y's. So the last one's kind of a freaky one. Theta equals 1. Uh, what the hell do I do with that? If it was tangent theta, tangent theta is... So what can I do to both sides? Take a tangent to both sides. Again, it's kind of like, what's missing? Let me do that to both sides. Let me bring that in. So if I take tangent of both sides, I get tangent theta equals 1. No, Jeff? Tangent, tangent one. 1. So what's tangent theta? Y over, x. y over x. So y over x equals whatever tangent of 1 is. So y equals tangent 1x. One one tangent 1 is just some ugly you know, tangent of 1. Make sure you're in radians and something. Who knows? Do you see what I mean by tangent being like a slope? Y equals mx. What's in M's place? Tangent. Neato, if you think about it. Tangent's very much like the slope. And you have to keep the 1 there, right? Because that's supposed to tangent, not with the x. Yeah, I took a tangent of both sides. No, so like at the answer, can, can you just say y equals tangent Yeah, exactly. Of x? Good point. I should put it like that just to make it double sure. Right? Oh, the x yeah. is on the outside. <laughs> I'm not taking the tangent of x somehow, magically, yeah. So tangent 1 is just a number. It's an ugly number. What's up? You're right. I don't believe. That's all right. I don't believe a few other people. Um, so let's, if I add a slightly nicer problem, I have like theta equals pi over four. So that is an equation in polar coordinates. That is saying. In fact, we can think about this. What would that look like? Does it tell me anything about r? No. Of course not. There's no r in there. All it says is theta must be pi over 4. So that should end up being, if, I, if I'm stuck and I make r anything I want it to be, I end up with this line. And what line is that? Uh, y equals x. 45 degree angle, x and y are the same. That's exactly, that's what that means. So when I convert this into rectangular, I expect to get this equation. So what do I do to both sides to give me something? Obviously, we probably do the same thing we just did. Theta by itself, I don't know anything about, but tangent theta, I know something about. So if I take tangent of both sides, tangent theta is y over x. What's tangent of pi over 4? 1. 1. So when you multiply x up, you get y equals x. So what's trying to be next? How is it the tangent comes up to the what? Sine over cosine? Uh, one of the okay, yes. You cancel out the radical 2 over 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 2 Clean sheet. There you go. So I want to convert to polar. This is x, y, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So r is 2. Oh, yeah, when I put my hand there, it overcompensates. Is that okay? Just plug and shut. And then to get the angle, I just do the basically inverse tangent. Of, now this is really nice. Let this be nice. The inverse tangent of y over x. So. And one angle does that. Um. Five or six. Five or six. I love it. And you just got to make sure at the end of this that you end up in the same quadrant as the original point was. So when you do this, you're just getting a reference angle. But sure enough, this was in the first quadrant, and this is still in the first quadrant. So this would become 2 pi over 6. So if I told somebody to turn pi over 6 radians and go out two steps, they would end up at the point root 3, comma 1. Now, this one, hopefully you guys Going this way is a little bit easier, actually. 
y and x are a little bit better defined. If you replace y with r sine theta, and x is r cosine theta, you just multiply it up, you get r squared sine theta cosine theta equals 1. And you can, you know, if you want to simplify that a little bit, r squared equals 1 over these, so you can make it cosecant theta, secant theta if you want to be doing all that niftiness. I don't really want to take a square root because then i got to do a plus or minus, so you can stop right there. Is that all right? Was that, that one's a little bit better. This was always a little bit easier going from uh, rectangular to polar. Because I just replace x and y with r sine theta, r cosine theta, and they just simplify. Going for polar rectangular is a little bit harder because I might not have my r in front of my cosine, or I might be looking for y over x to make it change. I mean, it's a little bit harder. Um, I'm just going to keep doing this. Well, for this last one here, so this is just r squared. R squared. And x is just or cosine theta, and you can divide by r, and you get r equals cosine theta. And that's like I was saying earlier, that's just a circle sitting on the x-axis. Really nice little equation in polar. So you know when you're done, when you, how do you know when you're done? When you have, uh, if you're trying to convert to polar, you know when you're done, when you only have r theta, and you don't have any x's or y's. Now from there, you, you might, please, Divide by r, if everybody has an r. Please add like terms, if you have like terms. You know, simplify a little bit. So you shouldn't have any x's and y's when you're going from... Rectangular. From rectangular to polar. You should end up totally r theta. From polar to rectangular, you should end up totally y, x. So what about down here? If you do like I suggested, one, two, three, and then you make this fourth one, all right, well, one, one, two, three, two. This is always exciting. One, two, three, three. And then one, two, three, four. Where would you put your numbers? What's that? Where would you put your numbers? You can put just um, make sure to do that. One, yeah, you do. two, three, four. Yep. So to find three pi over three. And it would have made more sense for them to say theta comma r, but it's too bad. Because I want to probably tell the dude where to turn before I tell him how far to go out. Alright, walk this far. Oh, you should have turned this way. Oh shit. So I want him to turn pi over 3, so I want him to look along this dotted line here, and then I want him to walk out 3, bam. So that's point A right there. How are we doing so far? Is that? You repeat that. Sure. So this tells me to turn to an angle of pi over 3, so I want to be facing pi over 3. And the first part tells me now walk out 1, 2, 3 steps. This guy tells me to turn to face 3 pi over 2, and then walk out 1, 2, 3, 4, four steps, so that's B. C says turn to face pi, and then walk out 1, 2, 3, and a half steps. Cool, so that's C. D says Look at pi over 3 again and go out 3 halves, so 1 and a half steps. That's D. Now we're getting more interesting here. Negative 2 pi over 3. So negative 2 pi over 3. Face 2 pi. Yeah, turn around. <laughs> go 3. No, not 2 pi, but 2 pi over 3. Yeah. So face negative 2 pi over 3. What's another name for negative 2 pi over 3? Or... or let me see how I can help you guys out. Um, so using what I've got here, negative 2 pi over 3 would actually end up pi over 3 away from here. Right? So it should be across from... 
three. So if I want to end up two pi over three back, I mean pi over three back from here, right? So it ends up actually being across from pi over three here. here. So pi over three. I want to face this direction, and I want to go out. Now I want to go out negative three. So I end up just going back one, two, three, right back on top of there. That would be E. So I want to turn negative. I want to face the negative direction. I want to turn negative 2 pi over 3. So I end up facing here. And then I want to go back three places. So I ask you, now again, look at it this way. I have to turn by a negative angle. So I have to turn this way. So I'm facing negative 2 pi over 3. And then where am I telling them to go? Minus. Back three steps. So I actually end up stepping back into the first quadrant. So if it was three, it'd be down there. So a really good thing to do, now that I've kind of forced you to look at it the ugly way, think about what this really means. If I wanted them instead to go forward three, instead of facing back two pi over three, I could just ask them to face forward pi over three. Right? Instead of facing back pi over two pi over three. I could rewrite this point oh, yeah. in an easier way first, and that would make it easier to plot that point. So you could do it either way. Of course, when you search for polar coordinate paper, you might find some that have some written out here. And of course, we could just finish this out. That would be nice. But... And the other way to do it is here's two pi over three there. It's one, two away from there, so one, two away from here should be negative two pi. Just got some symmetries working for you. So good, so it's really just, and, and the reason it's hard is because we've not done this our whole lives. The XY stuff, we've almost done this relatively our whole academic lives, almost. I mean, can you remember the first time you ever graphed something? Yes, some of you can't. Some of you can't. I mean, yeah, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast. So the whole point is turn a certain amount angular wise, right? Turn to a certain angle, face that way, and either move forward or backward from it. So really, it's just like XY. XY tells me to go so much over or that way, so I gotta do that first, and then I go up or down from there. So it's turn and then go out, instead of go over and then go up. So it's very similar, yeah. Um, you have to turn before you can move in that direction. Is there a reason that the turn is the second coordinate? That's what I was saying earlier. If I would have been around, I would have suggested we make it beta comma r. Yeah. But I wasn't. So, and even if I was, I don't know if I would have been beta up or down. Um, so what about this guy? This guy won't be quite as hard. Because there's 11 pi over 12. I want the dude facing 11 pi over 12. Then I want him to walk backwards once, twice. Here's, kind of, here's the next level, and then I'm actually going to let us out a little, well, a lot of it. I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. Um, figure that out. Let's try to graph something. Let's try to start nice. I'm going to graph two equations. And you're basically going to help me with the table, and then I'm going to show you how to graph it. Because my printer decided to jam up before I could print out. I wanted to print out one of these for you guys besides the one you already have, but that was just not the cards. But you'll help me out with the table at least. Um, so let's say we're given this equation here. We know now already what kind of picture will this end up being. Circle. In fact, we know even what axis is going to be sitting on. X-axis, yeah, because cosine goes like X. I like it. Um, if I make a little table, so I got my theta, I'm going to put it in the form that I want to put it in. Inputs, outputs. So if we, if we go 0, uh, 5 or 6, 5 or 4, 5 or 3, let's just start here and see if that's enough. The really cool thing about a lot of these is that trig functions repeat. 
So if you get to a point or they, they go they build up and then they build down the exact same pattern. So you don't have to do nearly as much work in your table as it might seem. Um, but obviously if I put a zero in there, what will I get? What's zero, cosine of zero? One. one. So one times five is five. Pi over six. Cosine of 30 degrees. Yeah, yeah, root three over two is five. Root three over two. Somebody approximate that for me. Oh. Like four point two. Four point three. Okay, and then pi over four. Yeah, so it's five root two over two, which is like three point five four. Three point five four. Yes. <laughs> Pi over 3, that's where it's nice finally. Yeah, so that'll be 2.5. And then pi over 2 is where it's 0. What's it do in the next quadrant after that? Same values, except now they're negative. So now it's just going to kind of go through negative 2.5, negative 3.54, negative 4.33. And so finally, negative 5 at pi, that's its maximum negative. Output. So let's see if I can manage this. You guys have some of that written down? I don't think you can fit both of these on here at once. Um, so zero. So let's set up real quick. Um, why did I have to do five, Jeff? Let's just make, let's just go out to one, two, three. Or look at me count five. Right. That's after four lines. Say again? That's after four four lines. That's four lines like at the end of the Why did two lines you just make it easier to do real quick? That is, is that cool? So now it'll be a little harder to find things, but we'll we'll survive. Um, so this is five. Well, let's just try this out. So I got the point zero five, so it's right there. At zero degrees, it's out at five. At pi over six. It's at four pi over three. So here's, sorry, four pi, four point three three. So here's four, and a third would be about right there. So at pi over six, it goes out there. Are, are you guys still kind of with me? I mean, this once you get over how to look at you know turning and going out, then plotting points is the same as plotting x y points. It's just that your pictures are going to be very different from what you're used to. Uh, this is just going to be a circle, not a big deal, but we'll do another one here in a second where it's a little more interesting. Um, at pi over 4, so it's going to be on this line here, it was at 3, three and a half basically, so here's 3 and a half on the pi over 4. Pi over 3, it was 2 and a half. So at pi over 3, it's um, here's 2 and a half. And then at pi over 2, it was back at 0. And that's going to be, as I go here, it's going to be the negatives. Right? That's what we said here. Okay. Now it's going to be like at um, 2 pi over 3, it's going to be negative 2.5. Two and a half. 1, 2 and a half. Okay, there you go. And so forth. And it's going to be these same points, just the negatives. So I am going to end up with this nice circle. So do you make your um, R's like on a scale of whatever you say? Because last time you said there are four out, and right here you have a Yeah, I can change scale. Just like I can change scale on X, Y axis. I can change my scale from one graph to the next. Not on the same graph, of course, but I just want to do that just to make it quicker to get to five. Oh. Right? Um, you can make each one. If you have like R equal to 11 at some point, you might want to make each one, one, two, three. That'll make it a lot <laughs> harder to find your point three threes and whatever, but still, yeah. you can still do it. Um, let's do one more and then we'll, we'll head out. Let's do one that's a little more interesting. Let's do, uh, uh, let's do 3 plus 3 sine theta. This one's kind of new. Let's go through the same kind of thing. <coughs> um, 
But this one we're going to have to go a little further. there and see what happens. <clears throat> Might have to go further than that. But the nice thing is once we get there, it's repeating stuff. Um, what do we get up here when r is zero? I mean when theta is zero? Yeah, this is zero, so I get three. Pi over six. What's sine of pi over 6? A half. So I get 3 plus 3 halves. Oh, man. Uh, 4.5. Pi over 4. This will be 3 plus 3 root 2 or 2. Somebody help me out with that. Let's see. Now it's going to be 3 plus 3 root 3 over 2. Is everybody with me? I'm just sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So now it's 3 plus 3 times that. No, it's 5.6. 5.6? Yeah. And then of course, when you plug a pi over 2 in there, that's the maximum. 3 plus 3, it'll be 6. And now here, the nice thing is. I want these, but I don't have to do as much work. It's just going to decrease right back down the same way. Is that cool? Did everybody see where I got those? I mean, that's sine does that. It goes from zero to the maximum, and then right back down to zero again, the same exact way. But aren't those negative? On the other side? Why? After um, pi over two. Is it sine? Sine, yeah. Oh, sine. Yeah. So let's keep going, because now things are going to change when we do hit the negative values. Right, so now if I do uh, 7 pi over 6 and uh, 5 pi over 4 and uh, uh, 4 pi over 3 and then 3 pi over 2, let's do this. So now, it really, you're really just worried about the reference angle as always. I know I'm in quadrant three now. You can almost make, I never actually taught it this way, but I want to do that. You can make little tables, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, and just put reference angles. That would be a good idea. Never thought of it. Um, so this reference angle, of course, is pi over six. So it's going to be, this part of it is going to have the same values, just the negatives. But of course, the whole thing is going to change a little bit. This will be... Uh, you can do a Jeff. Three minus three halves, right? The sine of pi over six is one half. Minus two. So that'll be one and a half. Here, this will be three minus three root two over two. Which is what it's like. 0.88. So I'll say like 0.9. Got it. Right. And then we got 3 minus 3 root 3 over 2. Is somebody still with me here? Or let me yeah. try to say, I said this last time, as with me as you were a few minutes ago. Because um, again, I, I'm really just worried about the reference angle as I'm doing this. 4 pi over 3, the reference angle is pi over 3. I'm in the third quadrant. I know they're all negative, the signs. 60 degree sine is root 3 over 2, so I subtract it. It's going to be negative there. So what does it come out to be? 0.4. 0.4? Yes. Okay. And then finally you get uh, 3 minus 3. Zero. Zero. Let me try that out now. So let's say this is quadrant four. So we'll start off, we'll have the pi over three reference angle, the pi over four reference angle, the pi over six reference angle, and then finally, I think we can handle the two pi. 
I like that. This would have been a lot easier to look at if I would have just said quadrant three and just put the reference angles in. That's not a bad idea. Why didn't I think of that at some point earlier in my life? I don't know. So, <laughs> as we do this, uh, I'm in quadrant four, so of course my signs are still negative outputs. So now I've got uh, three minus uh, three, or three over two. So now it's just, now I don't even have to do all that, do I? Point four, it's going to build itself back up. Point nine, one point five, until finally it's three again. So it's just going to build itself back up. The negative sign outputs are getting smaller and smaller as you move back up. Let's try to graph this thing. I think you guys are being very agreeable because I said this is the last thing before we leave. You know, <laughs> <laughs> understand? You understand completely? Please go fast. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so many things I realized at the end here. Let's see. So we go out to what? We go out to six. So let's do the two things again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So at zero, it's three. At five or six, it's four and a half. At five or four, it was 5.12. At uh, 5 over 3 is 5.6. And at 5 over 2, it was 6. 6. 6. All right, so now it comes back down, I think, right? So now it goes 5.6. 5.6 here. There and then here it's going to be there again. I don't know if you guys see what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, if I could just do it correctly, it would be great. There he is, Jeff. So you take a pi over four one and you just follow it along. It's going to be the same value there. You got to be careful that it's actually true. <laughs> but here it's just going to come back down. So at the pi over six one, it's going to be. That's what I was putting there. Yeah. And then it goes back to uh, at pi it was three. So that's kind of funky. It looks sort of like a circle almost. So see what it does over here. Um, this is my over 12 reference angle. Six reference, four reference, three reference. And then this is my three, four, six. Good. All right. Not too bad. So now at um, the pi over six reference angle here, it was 1.5. Uh, 1.5. Um, oh, my scale's a little freaky. It's just one to the right. It is a circle, isn't it? Man, my poor little scale was great. Let's just keep going. Oh, no. <laughs> Minus one. 1. 1. 1.5, exactly. I can deal with that. Um, pi over four. 0. 0.9. 0. 0.9, thank you. I'm just going to capture the idea at least. Four pi, my pi over three was point something or other. So just going into there, and it's just going to repeat that same thing as it comes back out. So this is kind of a neat shape. Oh crap, an app. It's not horrible. So it's trying to look like an app. Of course, officially this is called a cardioid, but the last semester I think somebody called this the butt graph. And I don't blame you. But of course, it's the cardioid because it looks like a heart, not anatomically. So it's very nifty. So next time I will have some graph paper for us to try out. I'll try out this new method that I just created on the fly here and see if, it, if you guys like that. And I'll have like a, a sheet of common graphs and what they look like, equations in, in their graphs. Cool.
I thought I'd be real smart and draw my own thing, but then I realized that there's no lines, so I was like, crap, how do I, like... Oh, yeah, you can just estimate. I mean, you got your, your, your three major ones, and you want to kind of do it all the way through. That would be your five or six. Yeah. Your five or four. Five or four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you hopefully would do it better than that. <laughs> and and that, that works pretty well. I just want to make sure that I have this information on the graph. Where did the table? You got the table. I hope you The last one? There's the circle one. Here's the, the points. And then here's the. That one or that one? We have to go to chemistry. Uh, all right. Oh, we have to go over. Can I have just like a clean bag? Oh, yeah. Yes. Right, and then there's something else. Or just bring one that will find online. Oh, yeah, you're gonna want to get those to be able to do your homework. Yeah. What are the corrections to? Oh, by the day of the next test. I did not. What are we gonna do on? So much smarter than I am. Second. Oh. Monday. Um, just keep finish. going in chapter eight. Yeah, I'm getting yours too. Getting your picture taken. Sorry. All right.